Hi, just a quick video. This Garmin GPS, what model is it for those playing along at home? The Nuvi 2597 LMT. There's so many bloody models. Anyway, it is uh, relatively old and this died on our uh, road trip uh, recently. It's, well, it didn't die. It's, the problem is, is that this loosey goosey USB connector, which is used for charging, of course, it does have its own built-in battery, but, uh, so once it's charged, it lasts, you know, a day or something, but then it's dead, unless you can charge the sucker up again. So, uh, I tried multiple leads when I was out on the mo road, and sure enough, um, it seems to be the connector in there, and that's probably just, you know, right-angle PCB mounted, and that, that feels really loose. Tell. Anyway, let's crack this sucker open. We've got four little itty-bitty... Torxies here and maybe some uh, plastic. Oh, they're, they're self tappers. Oh, that threaded uh, threaded insert rubbish straight into plastic. No whackers, got to get the price down. There's a few plastic clips around the outside as well. I don't expect that to just come off. Nut. And I thought there might be a screw under the barcode there, but no. You get in there and that looks like just an injection molder port for the plastic. And ta-da! Oh, that's a nice little compact battery, isn't it? It's not one of those... It's got its own uh, plastic moulding in the case there. That's uh, that's really quite nice. I like it. Um, yeah, it's a reasonable size speaker that they can get in there. And, of course, you've got the LCD, but it's all happening under here. And we've got a can. Can we get that up? Of course we can. <laughs> there we go. We're in like Flynn. But uh, un unpopulated footprint there. Wonder what that one's for. Don't know. Not really fussed what processors are used. Is that one of that's one of those uh, TI um, uh, you know, application processor jobbies? That's an upside down media text. All the electrons are going to fall out, and uh, so that would uh, is that the GPS? And uh, these uh, little spongy things here, just ground connections through to the uh, metal uh, back end plate. Nice. Um, on the LCD, I do that for uh, compliance reasons, and uh, is yeah external uh, micro SD card and not much else. Anyway, we need to get that board out. Tell you what, I do like that they use the same screws. That one's under a bit of sticky tape um, as the outer case. That's just you know nice touch when you're designing something. You know to use all the one type of screw reduces your uh, bill of materials. Uh, you know, a number of items on there that you can potentially uh, screw up or or not find uh, or whatever. And um, uh, like assembly, you don't have to change tools. And disassembly and repair, you don't have to change tools. It's a win-win-win. And there's our patch antenna. We've got more goodness on the bottom. Let's crack that open. Ta-da! There we go. So we've got our memory. Yeah, more memory. Not too fussed about the details. What we're interested in, that socket. And let's give it a bit of a wiggle, 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 yeah, shall we? And, oh yeah, look, <laughs> there you go, all the data pins. Wow, all the data pins have come up. All of them. That's actually good. I can just reuse that. I should just be able to resolder that. But, oh, mate, no, have the pads lifted? I need to get closer. Look at that. Wow, every one of those joints is broken every one of them which is quite unusual because solder a lot of people think um solder is you know not supposed to be used as a mechanical strain relief but that's its two main purposes it's uh electrical connection of course and then uh mechanical rigidity of the component to the board joining it and well look all of them are cracked so yeah bloody lead free rubbish is it um, but yeah, wow, there you go. But that's actually really good. It means that the connector is not damaged. Um, you know, because I don't carry one of these in stock, let alone one with that actual, uh, you know, right angle surface mount footprint. I might be able to rustle up one that's a standard right angle, but not a, uh, sorry, a vertical uh, one like this. But there you go. So that's actually a good thing. Um, it looks like the ground pad over here has lifted though, but that's no big deal. Still got the other ground pad connection over there, and that's not the end of the world. Even if both of those were broken, or even if you needed to, um, you could fix that. But yeah, I reckon I just uh, solder wick all that off and just put on some fresh solder, and uh, Bob's your uncle.
All right, let's check this sucker out under the Tagano here. You can see that, wow, that's really remarkable, isn't it? This GPS is like quite old. It's been there for many years. Just, you know, the vibration and the stretching, um, the uh, stress from the leads and stuff like that has just really caused that to completely come a gutter. Some of those little, um, you know, dendrite type things there. I'm not sure what the deal, deal is there, but... Anyway, I've got to hold this thing up at an angle, otherwise the damn thing focuses on the uh, top of the <laughs> top of the connector. Just clean it up first. You know, you could argue just take off the whole thing first and then clean up the pads. Maybe I'll do that. Should just lift out. It's got a cut out in the board, and then uh, once that's done, then you can get in there, clean up the pads, and flip the flip the connector over and get on the bottom side of the pins because um, it's quite hard. That inductor's in the way. Little pain in the ass there. There we go. Now it's all in focus. It's one of those depth of field things. See if we can heat this sucker up. And remove that. Yep, no wackers. Oh, a pad came off. Look at that. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was a pad. <laughs> it's it's not. Um, it's just the gap between the other one. Pad over here. That one's come completely off. But no wackers to that. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's connected. Yep, there's some vias there, and the one on the other side there, that's connected to this ground plane here with this cap, and over to the inductor here. So whether or not we need that, see where she's going. So it's these two here. So that's going into there. So yeah, we might have to uh, uh, reattach that. I wouldn't like to think that we can get away with that we might anyway we can put a little mod wire on there but uh, now we can get into our little connector see the copper pads pulled off there nothing you can do about that that wasn't me and there's some coppery goodness also peeled off on that side again once again that wasn't me that's all the flexing over the years so a good way to do this is just to maybe put some freshy stuff on there like that and then potentially wick that off. There we go. Get rid of that other crap too. Now I get our nice little uh, cleaned up connector that we can reuse there. Beauty. Because I, you know, buying one like that, you, know, you probably can. Um, it's probably an off-the-shelf uh, uh, vertical mini B, but anyway, you know, I'll clean up pads on here. Bloody speaker wires, they're soldered on, so that makes it uh, really rather annoying. Gotta like flip it over like that before we can work on it. Now here's where you want to uh, drop your temperature down a bit. So I've just dropped it down to 330 from 370. So we don't want to lift any more pads. And I'll we'll apply from some fresh stuff there. And then we'll just wick it off. And you really don't want to scrape the wick because that can lift your pads too. So there you go. Oh, I forgot the ground plane. Nicely cleaned up. Sorry for the overexposure there. Not too much light. You can never have too much light. You might have noticed I'm changing my glasses here. I've actually got a uh, special higher magnification uh, pair, which um, it allows it's better for working like this. I just thought I'd swap. But it's fine. I can see it. <laughs> see it before. I can see it without. No problems, but you know, it's better. Or oh, more better. Put that puppy back in there like that. And. Ready to solder that sucker. Inductor's really quite annoying. Sometimes you get ones in the way like that. I use my 0.38 millimeter stuff here. Yes, I am using the lead-free rubbish. I keep forgetting the instructions for the uh, Tagano remote control thing. I'm going to have to like print out the thing and leave it. You can do some stuff with it. It's not um, it's not the best user interface. Let me tell you. Get one on the ground. Grounds in place first. There we go. I'll hold it there. Yeah, this is, um, I have to change my tip here. So I just pull it out while it's hot. Got my silicon mat. No whackers. For those you know, curious, I'm using my Pace uh, ADS uh, 200 here. There we go. Gone to a smaller chisel. The inductor is annoying little turd there. I just freshly tinned my tip there. It's always important to keep your tip clean. Really rather annoying. Yeah, got to get all the way from the other side there. But 
Yeah. Ah, too much solder. Nice. Other side. There we go. Looks a bit ugly. Flux residue on there, but uh, there you go. That looks like a bought one down in there. This turd. Ah, oh, how can we do that? Get a mod wire over the other side of the board because um, those, or just scrape it right, scrape those vias there. Oh, my bloody scalpel's gone walkabout. Wow, that's really hard to do. Could of course remove the inductor. Tiny little vias. I think it's going to be easier just to scrape this top pad here off. It's been how you're doing. And then I'll just run a mod wire. There's actually room down there to run a mod wire if you had to. I could actually go from the top of the frame there over to there. That's doable. I'm actually using the mod wire to prop my little uh, webcam up here. That's annoying. Now, I could solder just a short length onto that, but the problem with that is, is that the heat just conducts straight down uh, the wire and it's just going to heat up both pads and it's just going to like fall off. It'd be really annoying. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, just make a short little jumper wire. Even if you have to fold it back on itself, it's just going to make the soldering easier. So I'm going to put a bit of flux in there. There we go. That pad looks like it's taken. There we go. Good enough for Australia. So that does look uh, like long and uh, bodgy there, but yeah, trust me, that was easier than trying to like bodge in a tiny little wire across there like that. It, the whole thing would just heat up and it would just fall off. Nice colours in that. All right, so that's all back in. Close the case. Let's see what's what. And of course, I'll have to uh, check that it uh, communicates with, does the serial comms, but uh, because that's how you update the maps and uh, and power up. Oh, I have a problem. I think there might be a short in there actually, because this connector was heating up. Oh wow! Did I completely screw that? It could be people screaming at me. Those two vertical ones, is it the horizontal ones like that? At the other, ah, no, I've chosen the wrong pads. Oh, dumbass, Dave. Too busy worrying about the shoot. That's power. Oh, it's those two there. Idiot. It's like just the orientation. I just saw the two pads right next to each other, two little vias right next to each other, and ah. Oh, Oh, so yes, I looked at the other side and it goes to the inductor. It's the power. I don't even have to measure that. So yeah, oh, dumbass Dave. That's what happens when you don't engage, engage your brain. So I'm debating whether or not we even need to put that back at all, actually. I'll just uh, flip the board back out. Okay, that's our wonky one. It just, no, it goes down through those two vias and there's nothing down there. I don't think there's a trace that goes under. The inductor, and of course this one's uh, this one's connected over here, and then the vias go everywhere else, and everything's hunky dories. Yeah, check it out. Look, and th those vias don't go anywhere. They're just vias next to the pad. This thing's fine. I don't think it needs any wire there at all. I was mistaken because I, I mixed up the other two uh, vias and thought that it actually went somewhere when it didn't. I get some light under there. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. There's two vias there, seem to be flapping around in the breeze. There you go, once again you get light behind that. Nope, they're going nowhere. Don't see any other shorts in there. Yeah, I need to clean this thing up, it's a bit messy, but those pads don't go anywhere. There's something weird happening here, it's just sort of like rebooting. It's very strange. It's not supposed to do that. Hmm. No, oh, flicker, flicker. No, something's going on. You are not going to believe this. I am <laughs> copping Murphy today. Wow, unbelievable. All that sort of like weird resetting stuff and like uh, glitching on the display and all that was caused by not anything I did, a bloody dodgy little mini B. Look at the pissant little cable on that. Unbranded, not marked, not rated, not anything. Ah, oh, toss that straight in the bin. That was just dodgy as. So that was like causing voltage drop and the processor just wasn't getting enough and it was resetting and hiccuping and doing what not and uh, like I replaced the cable and I just tested it on the PC and it's fine it connects it so everything's winner winner chicken dinner 
I could have really chased a red herring down a rabbit hole there, all because of a bloody USB cable. You know, you would think that that was something that I just did. Like, so I could have gone down, I could have spent ages on that, but uh, no, it was the bloody cable. Like, I, I knew, I visually inspected it, everything looks fine. This sucker should work. And sure enough, I did actually uh, suspect the cable, and that was it. Unbelievable. So you can, you can really come a guts of there very easily thinking it's not the first time it's happened. God, if I had a dollar for every time it's happened, probably Murphy's got me like that. Where I've like done something, you know, I'm repairing something, designing, building, troubleshooting, testing, doing whatever. It turns out to be nothing that I did, but, you know, some other equipment, a cable, a connection or something like that. Um, no, won't get any satellites in here. It's a GPS simulator. It's turned on. Awesome. Uh, so uh, th there you go. That works fine. It's now uh, charging up. It's talking. It's communicating. It's doing whatever. Yeah, I could uh, probably like put some epoxy in there. I might actually do that maybe. Uh, put some epoxy on that connector just to really put it in place because yeah, it's, it's not the best uh, design really that uh, USB connector. It is relying on those pads and they really can be quite solid but as you saw one of them was barely connected to nothing just had some vias there went through to the other side no you know but when they're actually connected to large pads spread out over the board and you've got lots of pads then you know they can be really structurally uh, sound but you know vibration it's in a car of course and it's vibrating it's over the years and it's you get a lot of stress you plug it in plug it out move your gps around because this wasn't like permanently mounted it was kind of like it's just like down in the center console uh kind of thing a bit flapping around in the breeze and yeah so it gets a got a lot of stress that connector but anyway that's fixed so there you go oh man i <laughs> and i'm not going to edit out that uh goof i've me doing that um because hopefully you'll learn something from that that it's easy to make a goof like that when you just assume you know, assumptions are the mother of all screw-ups, and, well, that just, yeah, happened there. I shorted out the, <laughs> the power, so the connector got hot. <laughs> it's good, my uh, USB uh, pack, you know, it handled that fine. It must have a uh, resettable uh, poly switch in there. Anyway, I think it continued to dump the power in, actually, because that, you know, the cable got quite hot. It's not like it just, uh, you know, stopped. Goose like that happened, but noticed it pretty quick, and... Uh, no damage done, and that's a repaired GPS. So anyway, if you like that, and if you like my screw-up, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below, and the EV Blog forum, and evblog.tv domain, which now links to my library channel. So check that out, and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 5,000. Maybe I can do it by this video. Catch you next time. Hello.